The Black Christian Nationalist Creed. I believe that human society stands under the judgment of one God, revealed to all and known by many names. His creative power is visible in the mysteries of the universe, and the revolutionary Holy Spirit which will not long permit men to endure injustice, nor to wear the shackles of bondage, in the rage of the powerless when they struggle to be free, and in the violence and conflict which even now threaten to level the hills and the mountains. I believe that Jesus, the Black Messiah, was a revolutionary leader sent by God to rebuild the black nation Israel and to liberate black people from powerlessness and from the oppression, brutality, and exploitation of the white Gentile world. I believe that the revolutionary spirit of God embodied in the black Messiah is born anew in each generation and that black Christian nationalists constitute the living remnant of God's chosen people in this day and are charged by him with responsibility for the liberation of black people. I believe that both my survival and my salvation depend upon my willingness to reject individualism, and so I commit my life to the liberation struggle of black people and accept the values, ethics, morals, and program of the black nation defined by that struggle and taught by the black Christian nationalist movement. Um, we're going to be covering a lot of information today, so um, follow along with me in the book. Start with our introduction, and the introduction reads, this is who we are. As black Christian nationalists, we seek to free ourselves from individualism in order that we may become a people. That's right. Yeah. We seek to free ourselves from individualism in order that we may become a people. Right? Yeah. The most important single aspect of both our faith and our program is that we have rediscovered the process by which the individual can be led to divest himself of individualism and merge into the mystic communal oneness of the black nation. And this is a statement from BCN, it's on page 67. Salvation is, it's our founder's word, salvation is a group experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the key. This is the key for us. Salvation is a group experience. And when we talk about, we talk about, we talk in here about a process. Process? What process? What process do we offer? We have, a, we have rediscovered how God saves and works in the world. Well. God does not save individuals one by one, shoot them off to heaven, Jesus did not die for our sins on Calvary, and we're not saved by his blood atonement on Calvary. Right? Oh, yeah. The secret lies in the history of the black nation is Israel, the teachings of Jesus, the black Messiah, and the, uh, the experience of the disciples at Pentecost. Oh, yeah. Here inside of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church, we have discovered and we use ancient African spiritual truths. Say that. Amen. Ancient African spiritual truths. Truth. Amen. Amen. It's not like it went anywhere. We just rediscovered them because we live in this Western world. Well, yeah. That's right. We've discovered that the group, not the individual, the group can mediate the power of God. The group. It's another point. The group can mediate the power of God. And if and only we're willing to submerge our individualism inside of the shrines of black, we believe individualism, not individuality, right? That's all right. the members, of the, we're, we're not. I, when it, it, it bothers me, and I won't mention about that, when people say that, especially all the members, we, we know the difference between individuality and individualism. That's right. Individualism is where you put your interests ahead of the group. Yeah, that's right. Where your desires, your wants are ahead of black people's needs. That's right. Well. Right? That's what has us messed up, our disunity. Everybody right. wants to do what I want to do, to do my own thing. Well. Mm. Well. We all have gifts. Not, not down in there. And we do need to bring our gifts together. But why are we bringing our gifts together? 
Are we bringing our gifts together so I can show you how great I am? Right. Or are we bringing our gifts together to God and which we're trying to deal with our oppression? That's right. Well, This is not personal attention or personal recognition. Why right? we're trying to submerge ourselves to become one. Right. Think about the first thing that Jesus commanded. What was the first thing? This is a mature group. What was the first thing that Jesus demanded of his followers? Before that, before he got to love, what did he demand of his followers? You know it. We, we, we ain't been practicing it. I, 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 I was speaking about myself. What did he say? Deny, Deny yourself. yourself. There you go. There we go. <laughs> we, we just have to read. Get that, get that crunk up again. Deny yeah, yourself. Yourself. And we believe that inside the church. Unless you deny yourself, you are separated from God in a lot of ways. You can't really, God is cosmic energy, we believe in cosmic energy and creative intelligence. We know all of that, but you can be, in your mind, you can be separated, right? Because you're full of yourself. That's right. If you're full of yourself, how you going to, you don't need God, That's right? right? That's right. right. You, you pull up God when you can't do it after you figure out, oh, heck, I can't do it. Then you come, oh, help me God. Or do, or, and I don't, I don't want to submit, I submit to you. Or do you do that first? Do you go to God, check with God first before you make decisions? Before you act, well, you have to ask yourself that question. That's right. right. So that's the introduction, and we'll get back to that. What we're dealing with this morning, we're talking about parables. And this is one of the definitions because there were many. This is pretty simple. Parables, a short, simple story designed to communicate a spiritual truth, religious principle, or moral lesson, a figure of speech in which truth is illustrated by comparison or example drawn from everyday experience. Mm -hmm. In a parable, something is placed alongside something else in order that one may throw light on the other. Mm -hmm. It could be a familiar custom or incident is used to illustrate some less familiar truth. Mm -hmm. Now it goes on says, Jesus, the black Messiah, mastered the use of parables to build a group and a movement. Wow. Jesus was a bad boy in parables. Now, a lot of times, I, I didn't want to get lost in that, a lot of the parables he was using because um, he was talking about the establishment. He was talking about the Romans in his parables, and he's a revolutionary. He even hides the fact that he's the Messiah because you could be killed for saying that. That's right. That's right. Why didn't want to play with you? talking about the you, you wonder why he didn't come out and just say it openly. I'm the Messiah. Yeah, you don't know. You can't see that, dumb dog. No, he secretly That's right. used the parables, and he talks many times about exposing himself as being the Messiah. Well. We just have to check the chapters and read well. the verses. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, many of the parables grew out of complex situations where Jesus creatively answered his religious critics. These are called answering parables, usually for the Pharisees and the sinners simultaneously. They simultaneously expose and praise at the same time. Jesus was so surgical with parables, parables like he, he could have two different groups. He could have a sinner and he could, he could um, praise the kingdom of God in his own, in his words. Let's see what it says here. Jesus exposed the self-righteousness of his critics and praise the kingdom of God. When John the Baptist was challenged for being too serious and Jesus for being too frivolous, Jesus came back with the parable of the plain children. For time's sake, we can't go over those, but I left that there. You're going with, no matter what I do, the bottom line is that no matter what I do, you're not going to listen, just like a child would. And this was then exposed the, the inconsistency of the criticism. Now, his most famous parable, Jesus praises the forgiving love. He praises the forgiving love of the Father, and he exposed the hostile criticism of the unloving elder brother. Now, it goes on to say that the parables are evangelistic. It means they're needed to be preaching. They're for converting people. He's just not saying something just to say anything. He's preaching and he's converting people at the same time. Because they sought to stimulate a decision and change somebody's life. That's right. This is to affect our decision making, to affect the person's decision making. 
They invited the audience, which is the hearer, to repent and believe. Their parables are intended to awaken. That means to stir up your faith, to stir up your faith. The teller's faith was contagious. The segment about the elder brother is unfinished. Mm -hmm. Listen to this here, and open-ended. It just didn't condemn him. He could choose at some point to go down. Y'all are familiar with the parable, right? Mm -hmm. If you, you are familiar. He could choose. It's open ended. He could choose to go back and say, man, let me swallow my pride. What's inside of me that's keeping me from being <clears throat> getting emotional? I'm forgiving to my brother. Well, why, why, why am I unforgiving? I need to put on my dancing shoes and get down there and celebrate that I've got my brother back. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Love, forgiveness, and join the party. <clears throat> parables cry to Jesus. Parables cry to Jesus. Now, though Jesus perfected the, the oral art of telling parables, their background can be found in the Old Testament and in secular sources. Mm -hmm. Konada um, did a great job, and uh, Elder Takuma did a great job in talking about mm -hmm. some of the secular sources. And there are still parables that are going on today. Mm -hmm. yes. So Jesus didn't originate, he was just master at them, well, right? And he perfected the art, but he, he wasn't in the with Jesus. That's right. Now, the Old Testament employs a broader category of Masah. That's, that's how it's pronounced, I put it in there, Masah which refers to all expressions that contain a comparison. A mashal can be a proverb, can be a type, you don't have to read these on your own, a dark riddle, an allegory, or a parable. The stories of Jesus are linked with the heritage of the prophetic parables in the Old Testament. You can go to Isaiah, if you want to check any of these, 1 Kings, Ecclesiastes, and 2 Samuel. Now, perhaps the most interesting antecedent, an event that existed before, is the parable of Jesus comes with, with the prophet Nathan's word to King David. Most of us are familiar with Nathan's parable to King David. But we want to get a little background, so we're, I had to blow up the screen because I'm going to paraphrase. And, and again, we're dealing with individualism, we're dealing with a group process, Within all this, we're dealing with, I've got a whole lot of stuff, and I hope I can get them together and I can do it in a way in which uh, the hearers will understand. So, this is the scripture. This is 2 Samuel, Prophet Nathan keeping the king of, of account. This is 2 Samuel 11. So, it says, as it, came to, as it came to pass after the year was expired and in the times when kings go forth to battle. Now, their year was different. This, kings didn't go into battle until springtime, during ancient time. So in wintertime, basically, the nation of Israel, the black nation of Israel, was prepared to go and fight. Now, the first mistake is, uh, David sent Joab and his servants with him, and he was, that was his personal bodyguard. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabba. Um, after they beat the Ammonites, um, um, they went to the city of Robert, and that was like their last stand, right? And so they, they had to take the city. But it says David tarried back at Jerusalem. That's his first mistake. He should have been out fighting. He was being irresponsible right here. You, you'll see it in your handout. Doing this irresponsible, you know, idle time. Well, idle time. You ain't doing. You ain't. You, you ain't in the struggle. You. Why? It wasn't no reason for him to stay back. It wasn't. It, the Bible the text didn't mention anything about him doing anything else. He just decided to be irresponsible. And he's the king. Mm. Now, he spies black woman's sister. Right? She's watching herself on the roof. This is, we, we pretty much know the story. And just to clear this up, it wasn't like um, uh, Bathsheba was trying to expose herself to him. She was doing a ceremonial bathing. In fact, she was poor, right? She was poor. But David spot David spots her. Spots her. Um, obviously, lust happened. He sends a messenger, so he knows that she is married. This is a king, right? He is great 
responsibility. When you're in charge of something, well, do you know when you're a leader, your level of responsibility, your level of integrity is greater than the normal members? That's right. Not saying that everybody has the integrity, but if you're a leadership, you have to have greater responsibility and integrity, and you should have a greater relationship with God. That's right. Should. That's right. Should. Should. I'll be worse. Should. I'll be worse. And and they had relations. Bathsheba went back home. She conceived. She knew she was pregnant. She told David. Then he goes with the cover up. Right? And I'm, I'm paraphrasing all of this. He calls Uriah to cover up the pregnancy. Right? This is the man of God. This is a great king. And this is, this is not to denigrate David at all. I can't even do that. This is a man after God's own heart. This is the one who ignited Israel. This is the one who defeated as a little boy, who, who defeated Goliath. Had an opportunity to, king, to kill King Saul, who was obsessively trying to kill David. Could have killed him in the cave. He did a great psalmist, an instrumentalist. Women loved him, right? Super warrior. Talking about Maccabee, David was a super warrior. He killed tens of thousands by himself. Well. Yet, yeah. Yeah. correct, yeah. a moment of weakness. And if it, 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 it just goes to show, <laughs> nobody, nobody, nobody is separate. Again, it's not all of us experience this. Individualism is rampant in everybody's heart if you're not connected with God. Yeah. Um, deceit, murder, <clears throat> cover up as you read the story. His mm -hmm. deceit was, first of all, he tried to deceive Uriah. Mm -hmm. But Uriah was faithful to God. He couldn't even go home. He wanted him to go home. You know, go, go, go home. Like, come on, come on. In. How, how is the battle going out? You know, all that phoniness. And he wanted him to go home, but Uriah wouldn't do it. He slept outside with the bodyguard. They reported back and let David know. So David tried something else. This time we're trying to get him drunk. But right? if he get drunk, he won't want his wife then. That didn't happen. So he sent him back out to battle. He had a murder. Right. Murder. Murder. Cold-blooded murder. Right. He conspired. Sent a note. Put Uriah in the front of the battle. Put him in the put, put him in the heat of the battle continuously. So eventually you're going to get killed, and he did. Mm. When the message was given back to David, David shows no remorse. Mm. No remorse. Bathsheba wept for her husband. David does not. So we got again, we got lust, deceit, murder, cover up. Now, then you got Nathan. The word of God comes to Nathan. This is so critical of the word of Nathan is that other people in the black nation of Israel knew. I know they're saying in the text, I'm telling you, they knew. The, 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 the messengers had to know that David had committed these sins. Other people in the house of David, all of his servants, some of his advisors that were there, they knew he had yes. did this. Yes. They knew he had that man killed. Right. And nobody said nothing. What do you do when you when you see something wrong and it's somebody that's in authority? Do you say nothing? Mm. It ain't none of my business. Well, they're, they're in charge. Of, let God have it. <laughs> God and God does have it, but God needs to possess a body. In all, God works through people. That's right. Everybody's agree with it. God works through us. That's right. We're yeah. God's voice that's in the right. world. Yeah. So, can you go to Second Samuel twelve? And, and it reads, Yahweh sent Nathan, the prophet, to David. He came to him and said, In the same town were two men, one rich, the other poor. You can go to 2 uh, Samuel 12 if you want to read this again. The rich man had flocks and herds in a great abundance. The poor man had nothing but a ewe lamb, that E-W-E -E that's pronounced you. one only. A small one he had bought. This and, and this he fed and grew up with him and his children. Now this was a special lamb in the story that he's talking about. You know, like you have a any of you have pets, right? Now you, you might have a pet if, if you're an animal lover, and the pet really is a part of the family. 
Right? The pet is, is more than just the dog that you go out there and go feed the dog. He is a part of the family. And this is the story about this, this particular lamb that I look back. Some people kept lambs, while you might have the main herd of lambs out in the field. This particular lamb would have his own little area. And so it's talking about this, or it's giving this analogy in this parable. This he fed, and it grew up with him and his children, eating his bread, drinking from his cup, sleeping on his breast. It was like a daughter to him. When there came a traveler to stay, the rich man refused to take one of his own flock or herd to provide for the wayfarer who had come to him. Instead, he took the, rip, the poor man's lamb and prepared it for his guests. And it says, David went off. <laughs> David, boy, he exploded. He snapped like a Slim Jim. <laughs> right? David's anger flat up against the man. As sure as God lives, he said to Nathan, the man who did this, the man who did this deserves to die. Mm. Right. An exclamation point. <laughs> he must make fourfold restitution for the lamb for doing such a thing and showing no Amen. compassion. Amen. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. Mm. Hello. You are the man. Watch out. Right. And remember now, he's the king. That's right. Mm. So it doesn't put an exclamation point where it, it, he has to deliver this to the greatest king in Israel's history. Mm. Super famous. Wow. And it goes on to say, God says to David, I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you from <clears throat> the hands of I delivered you from the hands of Saul. We talked about that. I gave, you your, I gave you your master's house to you, his wives into your arms. Mm. David had Uku women. Mm. I gave you the house of Israel. He was a king. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 that was he had many wives. That's, that's, a part, that's a part of African tradition. Like I'm sure, I've never been to Africa yet, but I'm, <laughs> men have more than one women over there. This, this, is, this, is, this is Africa. Come on, that's they do to get down. Oh, damn, I changed this channel out. Let's go. Um, <laughs> I delivered you from the hands of Saul. I gave you your master's house, your wives, I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And he goes on to say, you can read the story, I would have given you anything. Anything. That you desire. Then David, he falls to his knees, and he remembers what had happened. Mm -hmm. He knows that he sinned, not just against Uriah. He sinned against Uriah most definitely, but the main thing is he sinned against God. Mm -hmm. He's broken the relationship with God. He separated himself from God. Mm -hmm. He probably identified with the parable, mm -hmm. with the Uri lamb. Remember we talk about comparisons or illustrations. Remember, David was a shepherd. Mm -hmm. Why he wrote the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, that was his first job, was protecting his sheep, right? right. With his slingshot, right? right? He killed lion, he killed bear, All he right. protected Israel, he killed Goliath. Everybody else was pumped out. Mm -hmm. right. right? God was with him. Mm -hmm. Now, it goes on to say the love, courage, and integrity of Nathan. Nathan was not only a prophet, this, this is key for us, he was not only the prophet of David, he was also a close friend and advisor. It was Nathan who David consulted on the building of the temple of God. You go to 2 Samuel 7, 1. Nathan also opposed David's son, Adonijah, this was later, who tried to usurp the power of David and take the throne. Nathan advises David to make Solomon. David had many sons. It's not just Solomon. He had a whole bunch of other sons to be his successor. So this was a guy that was called. This, this, like, this is like my buddy. Like I'm a, when you go in there and, and ask him for a, a, a consultant, that's important. This, 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 that was a friendship that emerged. Mm -hmm. But Nathan did not let his friendship with David keep him from keeping him accountable. 
from following doing God's will. Come on, right? man. Doing God. That's hard, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it, that, there's a sense of fear that I might hurt his feelings. Maybe I'll get fired from being a prophet. Yeah. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Maybe people won't look at me the same. Mm -hmm. It caused David to remember his responsibilities. David had broken the confidence, his relationship with God. Mm -hmm. He broke three commandments. Remember the Ten Commandments? He broke, let's go backwards. He broke commandment number 10, thou should not covet. He well, covered. He knew that was somebody else's wife. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thou should not commit adultery. He did the act. Mm -hmm. Then thou should not kill. That's mm -hmm. right. Now, unchecked, unchecked individualism would have infected the entire nation. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you think when we do that, and, and we've got to get back to this. I know we got new members in here. But you know, you, you don't think, like we believe in God of cosmic energy and creative intelligence, and we're dealing with African traditions. You don't think when you do something inside of the nation or inside of the group that it has implications for everything yeah. that happens in some type of way? Maybe right. not immediately, and maybe it does immediately start. It's how the universe is set up. That's right. That's right. Remember other members of the nation of the black men's we probably knew about David's crime, but said nothing. Well. Mm. And it goes on with David, repentant heart. Mm. That's the key. Right? Yeah. That's the key. David repented. He knew he had broken his relationship with God. But he was confronted. Had to be confronted. Mm. Had to be confronted. I know we don't like we don't like to do that. That's right. Con confronting each other, and it is a particular way. But we've got to do this. Unchecked, our individual will be rampant, or we won't even see it. David didn't see it. When you come in in, in in the grip of individualism, you don't see yourself. That's right. That's right. Or if you do, I, I, I like to see it. I, I see myself, <laughs> and, and to some to some degree. Let me put it that way. But it helps to have a group. That's right. Let me, let me put it in more. It's more important to have a group. We need a group. Just talked about the experience of God comes, our salvation comes from the group. Amen. That's the process of the shrines of the black men down. That's our main process. Both my survival, this is for our survival sake. Both my survival and my salvation depend upon my willingness. To reject, but you got to be willing. This does not automatically come by osmosis. You just come in here and I just reject individualism. We are all strong out on individualism. That's we are right. addicted That's to right. it. Just That's like right. a junkie is addicted to dope or alcohol. We're addicted to individualism. And the Western world does not help us because everything is predicated on you glorifying yourself as an us glorifying ourselves as an individual. What does repentance mean in the new millennium? Well, How does your group express repentance? And it goes on, remember James the just. What do you think James had in mind when he wrote, Therefore, confess your, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Yeah. Yeah. Say that again. Right. James the just. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Mm -hmm. It goes on in James to say, For a righteous man... Uh, is a power has a powerful and effective prayer. Confession is good for the soul, but it's not just enough to say I'm sorry. Mm. Not just enough. Amen. Amen. How does one show he or she is truly sorry? You do that through your behaviors. Yeah, that's right. you, you've got to say that, right. but then you can't do that anymore. Stop doing the same old stupid stuff. Or stop doing the same old sins again. And then when people will see your change, you don't even have to say, I changed. People will automatically see that you have changed. We'll see through our actions and our behaviors when we've changed or not. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go on to the next question. Who, talk about accountability, who is the Nathan in your life? Amen. Who is the Nathan in your life? Amen. If you're looking for a Nathan to hold you accountable, these are just some suggestions. And it's for the group. You can take them. I thought they were pretty decent. Look for someone slash group who will be consistent. They can't help you if they aren't there. Look for someone who tends to follow through, whose yes means yes 
and no means no. Mm -hmm. Two, someone slash group whose agenda is spiritual growth. The worst kind of accountability is someone who feels they need to fix you. You know, I would, would say it's getting those. Jesus talked about getting those. Um, the plant at your own eye, get that piece of wood, that, that plant at your own eye before you score and try to fix somebody else. Yeah. The worst, <laughs> you look for someone who genuinely, genuinely respects you as a leader and who is invested in your life and ministry. Someone who is leaning in, not leaning out. Well, mm -hmm. come on, man. Number three, All right. someone who, who wants a relationship. The best kind of accountability is a two-way street. Look for someone who is both teachable and a teacher, mm. who is open to both give and take, and the discipline, the discipline of accountability. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Four, someone slash group whose life and walk you respect. Mm -hmm. Credible. In order for someone to speak into my life, I need to know that you are living out a disciplined faith in theirs. Mm -hmm. For someone who walks the walk, who walks the walk, talk the talk, and walks the walk, mm -hmm. whose life is bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. Finally, five, good, someone good. Who, who considers this a sacred trust, mm -hmm. trust who, is, who is said in many in any accountable conversation, ought to what is said in any accountability conversation ought to stay with the two of you or in your group. Well, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> and that ought to be automatic. Yeah, I mean, you shouldn't have to that actually be a question. What's said in the group stays in the group. An automatic assumption that never needs to be repeated. That's right, man. This, 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 this stuff coming outside the group talking to that, somebody else, you just kill trust. Pow! You might as well just shoot trust. And it is hard to get trust back. Yeah. Again, once trust is lost. Yes. Well, right. Now follow me. Oh, yeah, we're with you. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. In my own community, there's nothing I wouldn't share with my whole church, but the whole church does not need to hear about it. And when it is told, it ought to be me yeah. telling it. When I want to tell, I want to tell how bad I am, what I didn't do. My, my confession, you don't even want to tell. Gossip, 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 gossip. They show me following in the air, Jesus real bad. Come on, tell me. Hey, 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 hey. And possibly we all guilty of this. Some form oh, right yeah. 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 So you want to see the devil? Everybody, y'all want to see the devil? Look at him. Yeah. Everybody, look at that. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And you got a problem. You're you, you, you ain't getting that one. That's a real problem. Ain't that ain't no point. Bad <laughs> man that's going on. He's inside. It's your decision making. Well, yeah. David made poor decisions. Yeah. Real bad decisions, right? Yeah. Well. And he, he, he had to know, but again, idle time, the devil's workshop, lust, right. individualism, oh, dog. he was out of place, should have been out fighting. Well, his fight was basically, he's the king, he's out uh, organizing and showing people what to do. As a leader, here's what I need most, and we're all leaders in here, say I'm a leader. I'm a leader. Okay. I need people in my life who love me enough Amen. to tell me the truth. Well. Uh, objective friend. I, I want that. Uh, I, that's how I grew up in the shrine. I, you need to tell me the truth. Don't have me out there. Think, don't praise me when I do a mediocrity job. Well. When this video, come and tell me. Well, you know, that was a you, know, you know, it's a way, it's a creative way to tell somebody. You don't come and say, that was ridiculous. <laughs> or whatever. But you might want to do it this way. Mm -hmm. You can get better at doing that way, but you've got to. Don't let me just think that I'm the bomb. Well. I heard it in the sermon last Sunday, right? Great voice, you took somebody, maybe it's a business, you should have took some, how about some uh, voice, some yes. voice lessons? Well. Right, because when you're going out in the real world, it's big time competition out there. You're not just in the church. Yeah, for those of us who can't sing, you are a superstar. That's right. Right, but when you get out in the real world, it's competitive. Well. All day long. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Anybody can make the high school team. <laughs> <laughs> so I can cut to the point and trust you to I need adults in my life who are more devoted to God and the covenant and the teachings of Jesus and the building of a black nation with power Amen. here on earth. 
Not false political politeness. Just talking about that to leave me stuck in a bad place. Come on now. You blowing my head up, and I, I ain't did, I ain't did that. Right. So I, I, I get a false perception of myself when I look at the bricks. That's right. Amen. Bad man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what they say. Oh Lord, I'm about to get through all this. The BCN change process mm -hmm. begins. That's what again. That's what we offer to black people. It's a change process. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I must be changed even to get to God fully. Mm -hmm. Fully. It begins with the face that salvation, y'all say that with me, salvation is a group experience. Slash process. And the biblical account of Pentecost where the power of the Holy Spirit changed the disciples. The power of the Holy Spirit changed the disciples. Y'all remember? Disciples were downtrodden. They lost Jesus. It makes so much people thought everything was over, right? right. Oh, yeah. And they came together, and when they came out of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, just like in Jesus, hit them as well. Mm -hmm. And they began to do some of the things that Jesus talked about, the things that I was not able to do. You would do even greater things. Peter, he was one of those knuckleheads, basically. You know, I don't want to talk about him Jesus. It got to a point where he was so the Holy Spirit was on him so much that it says his shadow. That's right. People that came in his shadow was healed. That's right. Both people had to touch Jesus, right? So we don't know what's possible. That's right. People coming to the PAOCC seeking to end the wretchedness and loneliness of a black condition grounded in individualism and niggerization. Right. Now, I put that, no, that's a hard word, but this is what we used to say. It, it, PTSS, that's uh, Jordan Grew, when she talked about post traumatic slave syndrome, all she does is affirm what we believe for years. That's right. You know, I, I see all these PhDs come out with this information, be like, oh, wow, such and such and such and such. But the old members inside of the church, we know we've already been through this. We've been through psychodrama. We had, so God was talking about this stuff in the 80s. She wrote this book in 2005. Right. Jerry Moses didn't put this together. Our church has unlocked secrets that we need to re-tap into. That's right. That's right. People come in and isolated, empty personal relationships, absence of community. We can look at our community and say it's an absence, ain't no love there. Community is one it's reflected, it's a manifestation of us. My Lord. You say, oh my community that bad. Did you like your you locked your door when you left the house? <laughs> How many people didn't leave and lock their door? How many people didn't lock their door? And would you put your wallet somewhere in your community? Did you lock your car? Hey, we got Maccabees out there. How many people locked their car? Well. How many people didn't lock their car? <laughs> That's at the church. You're telling me that you, you, you should feel safe. But this is the absence of love more than anything else. Well. Poverty, which grows more threatening with our growing technological obsolescence, and our poverty is more in our mind than in our physicalness. How much is that? I brought the, the book. Anybody so you, you will know I did some homework. Oh, I, I brought the thing about our $1.4 trillion uh, assets that we have, but despite having, having a buying power up to $1.3 trillion, we spend most of it outside the black community. Check this out. We spend $47 billion on Lincoln automobiles, $3.7 billion on alcohol, $2.3 billion on Toyotas, $2 billion on athletic shoes, $9 billion on hair, hair, $3.3 billion on tobacco products. And so we need to change our spending habits, which again starts up here, changing the black man and woman's mind. Well. Ignorance continued fear of the public schools. Oh. Well. Powerlessness in all of our life. Mm -hmm. Powerlessness, black powerlessness in all of our life. I know people I hear people sometimes push back, we powerless. Mm. Check this out. Michael Vick's dogs got more justice than Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, or Eric Gunn. That's right. Well. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. Mm -hmm. Michael Vick's dogs got more justice than Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, or Eric Gunn. Mm -hmm. Powerlessness, 
Barack Obama couldn't stop that. It happened on his watch, some of this. Huh? That's Oprah Winfrey? Well. Do you think she could change any of this? Nope. NAACP. Nope. Well, that's a no. NAACP, they can change this. This is happening. So, we're, so can, can we get on that one accord that we are powerless? Amen. Right. No Patterns of escapism in the negative belief system, the attempts to avoid or distort the reality of the black condition by using drugs. We just check out, been there. Excessive use of alcohol. All of this, boy. Lifestyle based on sexual conquest as a basis for ego, fulfillment, and prestige. How many women I got, or how many men do I have? Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's a different thing. It's, 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 it's a theology based on other world salvation. Anybody here addicted to scratch offs? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make it right here. This, <laughs> this, this <laughs> is the one we get $10 with. Inner conflict, frustrations, and blind rage. On July 7th, 2016, Micah Xavier Johnson ambushed and fired upon a group of police officers in Dallas, right. Texas, killing five cops. My emotionalism is for Micah. And wounding nine others. John was angry over the shoot. Me too. <clears throat> John was angry over the shooting of black men, but he said he wanted to kill white people. Well, I understand the rage. Like, damn, I wish I could have talked to him. That's right. <clears throat> could have been a That's right. That's right, brother. All that skill set. <clears throat> yeah, he struck out in brown rage. That's right. <laughs> And so these are the people that we're getting inside of here. That's just not the way to kill a white man. We can't defeat the white man like that. That's right. That's old mm -hmm. stuff. We're going to do this by building a black nation. That's right. Yeah. Our, ability, our, <clears throat> our ability to meet these needs of people who come in here must be the basis of our community outreach and our church program. Therefore, we must clearly articulate and implement a BCN program of revolutionary transformation. Yeah, sure. yeah. Or we have no basis for community outreach. Why you want to why even call people to come in? Nor can we meet the needs of members who join urgently seeking transformation. Uh -huh. People come in here thinking there's something here so they can change. Hello. We do not merely substitute a new spiritual mysticism based on the experience of God for the old, otherworldly escapism of the traditional church. Which is based on the blood redemption of Christ and heaven and shooting off in the, in, in the sky. Well. For us, the experience of God is the basis of revolutionary struggle for self actualization and social change designed to transform our wretched black condition here on earth. Well. Amen. It is the basis of our commitment to struggle. The, base, the basis of revolutionary transformation is love. That's right. Not power, no institutional strategy or tactics. Black people must find healing in the fellowship in us. They got to see it in us. We got to stop fighting. That's right. Especially for the older members. Amen. We got to be the bigger ones. Well. Amen. We know. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do. We need a group. We need a group. Right. Oh yeah. We need a group. Yeah. That's right. The group is basic to practice the core, make the reinstitute that, and attainment of health, happiness, and prosperity. To reach our full potential, we must reject individualism by participating in the community of believers who accept the covenant of God, the yeah, relationship man. with God, and the communal relationship with our brothers and sisters. That's right. God works through the group as the instrument of change. Mm -hmm. It goes on and says, uh, group norm, the act of belonging. I'm going to let it go. It's a cop. Rejection of individualism. <laughs> the act of internalizing the law is the basis of change and acceptance of behavioral norms. And our group got to follow the norms that our group sets for us. You, we've got to act and practice in these things that we're going to change. Change just does not happen because you don't do nothing. Well. I guarantee you sit back. It's just not going to come. You sit at home. You got to be here. You got to participate. This is key. The practice of communal living. The way that we live together defines our relationship with God. That's right. Amen. Amen. You want to define your relationships? How, how do you live how, how, with God? How do you live with other people? Amen. That's right. You can ask 432. All the believers were one heart and mind. 
And no one claimed any of their possessions as their own, but they shared everything that they had. Right. Amen. Once tried to get towards that, the acts of confession and confrontation, got to confront each other inside of the process, ain't got time to go into that one. The act of loving one another. This is a mandate. This is, this is a requirement. You got to you if I don't like you. So, I still got to love you. I still got to respect you. I still got to work with you side by side. We don't get that option. That's right. We don't get that option. Amen. All right. We all we have. That's right. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> That's right. We got somebody else. We all we got. That's right. Oh, yeah. The act of working to, to bring the world into conformity with the will of God and bargain, both evangel and evangelical. That means we're going out, we're bringing people in and revolutionary activity. Finally, the group is the instrument of change. Utilizing the cool process. I'm sorry, Scott. Yeah. 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 All right. All right.